Hello everyone and welcome back to Heretics and Heroes. This is the Eclipse Pattern Amphibious Assault Vehicle from Maelstrom Design Works. And it is one massive beast of a vehicle. Today, we're going to be painting it the old-fashioned way. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at the details on this monster. This model was very generously gifted to me by Brett Wilson over at Maelstrom Design Works. This was his first test print for this particular design, and it is resplendent with detail. There are a handful of print errors, but they will very easily be repurposed into realistic weathering and battle damage. I am most excited to field this as a Crassus proxy, but it can double as a Praetor missile launcher as well. Let's address the Crassus Armored Assault Transport in the room. Why do I want to paint this using just regular brushes? Wouldn't an airbrush be much faster? Yes, of course it would. But up until recently, I didn't have an airbrush. I didn't even buy it for myself, it was a Christmas present. And while I do intend to learn how to use it, I know that there are still a lot of people out there who don't own an airbrush for one reason or another. Maybe they're a stubborn brush purist like I've been for most of my painting career, but maybe they just can't justify the expense for their particular needs. I wanted to make this video to show that you don't have to be intimidated by large painting projects even if traditional brushes aren't the most efficient method. So we're using a less than ideal tool. Let's try and make up the difference with good planning. I'm using spray primer. If you wanted to try and prime something like this by hand, good luck to you. And frankly, I am intimidated by your willpower. My big recommendation for this step is to spray your tracks separately from the body of your vehicle if you aren't just gonna prime the whole thing black. Having to go back and undercoat the tracks by hand is an enormous time sink due to all the little nooks and crannies you'll have to get into. I'm gonna be using masking tape to separate the track and the main body here since the model is already fully built. If you haven't finished constructing yours yet, I would recommend priming everything separately and then assembling. I'm spraying the main hole white because I just happen to have white spray paint on hand, but it helps a lot to get as close as possible to your intended base coat color. You may even be able to get a 100% match and save time on the base coating step. Speaking of base coating, let's get started. First, I'm going to paint the inside gray. I'm not gonna to pay too much attention to painting the interior for this video because it's not always applicable to all vehicles. Now we move on to the exterior. This is where I made a serious planning error. Normally when painting a vehicle, I would simply base coat, wash, dry brush back in a little bit of the base coat color, and then do a highlight dry brush. For this project, I decided to get a little clever with it, and I tried to cut out the wash step altogether. My plan was to do a dark base coat, a heavy dry brush into my mid-tone, and then a final highlight dry brush. This would theoretically be fewer steps, and I wouldn't have to use up half a bottle of Seraphim Sepia. This stuff ain't cheap, you know. Needless to say, it didn't go as planned. When I got done with my second layer of dry brushing, I realized I hadn't achieved nearly enough contrast. So I did a third layer, and then a fourth layer, and even then, I still had to come in and selectively apply washes to a fairly large portion of the model. This resulted in many additional hours of fairly tedious work. So please learn from my mistake. Base coat, wash, mid-tone dry brush, highlight dry brush. That's it. That's all you have to do. And if you're planning to do any weathering at all, don't worry too much about highlighting right now. You'll get that edge definition later. I ended up following my own advice here on the turret and it was comparatively a breeze to get up to the appropriate level of contrast. Next, we're gonna paint the tracks. As it turns out, the tracks were not actually glued in place, which I discovered when one of them accidentally fell off. 
so I took them outside and reprimed them to get all the gray that I initially missed. I want the tracks to look fairly well used, so I'm going to use this quick aged metal recipe that I came up with. We'll start with Rhinox Hide mixed with a dark gray or black. On top of that, we'll go into Doombull Brown. Let some of the darker initial layer show through, especially in places that might see a lot of wear. Next, we'll dab on a brighter rust color. Something like Vallejo Parasite Brown or GW Scrag Brown works very well. Use this color sparingly to represent fresh rust. To finish, dry brush on a dark gunmetal color to pick up the edges and add just a little bit of shine. This isn't the most sophisticated way to paint rusty metal, but it took all of about 10 minutes and looks pretty convincing. Now we're ready to move on to detailing. This is one of the most important steps in my opinion. It's the step where you get to make your vehicle look like an actual machine composed of multiple different parts instead of just a big hunk of homogenous material. Now is a good time to start deciding if any of the armor paneling should be a different color. Do you want any of the components to be metallic? Is there any equipment attached to the vehicle that needs to be picked out? I have quite a few pieces of stowed equipment that I put into the baskets along the sides. Filling in these details can be kept pretty simple. I'm just doing a base coat wash and then one or two layers of highlights on top. On such a large model, nobody is going to hyper scrutinize tiny details. Just having them well filled out and differentiated from the rest of the vehicle is gonna be enough. Something else that I think is important to pay attention to is anything made of glass. Windows, viewports, gems, lights, etc. Taking a little time to paint them convincingly can really add some visual depth to the whole piece. I decided to try something a bit different and went for polarized glass on the turret windows. I started with a dark blue base coat and started layering into purple towards the bottom left corner of the glass panels. I then thinned down a vibrant red to wash consistency and pushed that into the very bottom left corner. In the opposite direction, I started layering up into light blue in order to simulate some shine from the sun. It's okay to go very bright with the final highlights here. I think the result is fairly convincing, and as long as you keep your layers very thin, it should be easy to replicate. At this point, all you need to do is throw on some transfers, or freehand on some insignias if you feel up to it, and you could call this done. I would be totally happy to field this on the tabletop and deliver a platoon of the Emperor's Finest to the front lines. But you know me, I like to go the extra mile, so we're gonna have to do some weathering. Weathering is a very broad topic, and in the interest of keeping this video to a reasonable length, I can't talk about everything that I did. Instead, I'll focus on the element that I felt had the most striking visual impact, the paint chipping. We're gonna do two layers of paint chipping, one very light, one very dark. Let me illustrate the theory behind that. On any given surface, we're gonna assume that we have three layers. At the bottom, we have the base material, like the steel hull of the vehicle. On top of that, we'll have a layer of very light primer. And it doesn't matter if that's actually the color that would be used in real life. We're prioritizing contrast here. And then finally, on top, we have the exterior paint color. When paint gets chipped or scratched or rubbed off, that can happen to various depths. A shallow scratch might only reveal the primer underneath. A deep scratch, however, will reveal both the primer and the underlying material. So, our first round of weathering will be the shallow damage. Another advantage of choosing a very light color for this step is that your wear and tear will actually double as your final edge highlights. During this step, determine which damage you want to be superficial and which you want to be deep. And for the more substantial damage, just make sure you leave enough room to paint the underlying material color within the bounds of the primer color. This kind of weathering is conceptually very simple and mechanically pretty easy, but I can't say that it was quick. I think that I spent somewhere in the realm of 10 plus hours just doing the battle damage. There is a huge caveat to that though. 
I chose to do it in the slowest way possible by using a small precise brush for maximum control. You could dramatically speed up your weathering by using a larger brush with a damaged tip or by using a torn up piece of sponge to help keep your weathering looking natural without having to precisely place every single line and dot. I finished up the model by adding grime, carbon staining, and rust. For a more in-depth look at those elements, check out my Patreon, where I'll be posting a deep dive into the weathering process for this model. and she's done. Unfortunately, she is much too big to fit on my little turntable. So we're gonna give her a glamorous photo shoot instead. <laughs> for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe even learned something today. I know that tackling a big painting project like this with just a brush is a daunting task, but if you put in the effort, you can get amazing results. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, and subscribe so you never miss a video. It really helps the channel grow and reach new people. And if you wanna go the extra mile to support the channel, consider checking out the Patreon. There you'll be able to get all the latest updates before anyone else. You can participate in polls to help decide future content, and there are Patreon exclusive videos. I actually have a poll up on the Patreon right now, which is free for anyone to access, where you can help me decide what to paint for March for McCrag. Ultramarines were my starter army when I was a kid, so I'm really excited to get to paint one again after after more than 15 years. The last time I painted any Marine at all was before Primaris were even released. So I'm gonna get to experience the new scale for the first time. And if you're interested in getting an STL for the model that I painted today, or any of the other amazing vehicle designs from Maelstrom Design Works, I have links to his web stores on My Mini Factory and Cult 3D down in the description. If you do happen to buy one of his designs, let them know that I sent you. That's it for today, everyone. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you on the tabletop.